waves are mechanical vibrations in the air. A mechanical transducer, like a microphone, turns these vibrations into a signal that can be monitored and read by a gauge or meter. Mechanical transducers sense mechanical motions and turn them into some kind of signal. The signal, which is usually electrical, can be represented by a meter or a gauge. Let's look at some of the ways mechanical transducers can use very little mechanical energy when converting it into a signal. This is a type of microphone called a carbon mic. The microphone is shaped like a bowl and is filled with powdered carbon. The powder is a conductor and a small current passes through it. The top of the bowl is covered with a thin diaphragm that's like your eardrum. Sound waves hitting the diaphragm cause it to vibrate up and down. As the diaphragm moves, the carbon powder beneath it is compressed and released. This packing and unpacking of the carbon powder continually changes its electrical resistance. That affects the current passing through it. It's these changes in current that become the output signal. The changes in resistance, and therefore the output signal, are exactly related to the movement of the diaphragm. In other words, the output signal represents the input sound. Another way of doing the same thing is to use what's called a dynamic microphone. It's really like a miniature generator. Two magnets are mounted inside the head of the mic. They produce a magnetic field between them. A coil is placed in the magnetic field exactly like a generator. Now if the coil moves, it will generate a current. The motion is provided by the diaphragm, which is driven by sound waves. The intensity of the current is directly related to the intensity of the sound, so the current is the output signal. Yet another way of translating sound into an electric signal is a condenser microphone. Still equipped with a diaphragm, its output signal is a changing voltage. Inside the head are two plates with a charge between them, like the plates of a capacitor. Voltage depends in part on the distance between the plates. The microphone diaphragm is attached to one of the plates, causing it to move back and forth. This changes the distance between the plates and therefore the voltage between them. You've already dealt with this relationship in Unit 5 on energy, where you saw that a changing capacitance changes voltage. In all three microphones, an output signal corresponds directly to the input mechanical energy, the sound waves. In all three cases, the mechanical action of sound waves is turned into some kind of signal, either a changing resistance, a changing voltage, or a changing current. Excuse Any me, of them can I think you have the Peter? wrong microphone up here again. This oh. is a dynamic microphone. Uh -huh. It doesn't it's, have as... It, it, it you don't like it? I don't, it doesn't have as good a frequency response. Why not? The diaphragm in here has to move through the, mecha the uh, uh, magnetic field. Yeah. And it, it just what? takes too much time to go back and forth. When it goes a really long distance. Yeah. And, oh. and it, it, you don't like uh, it. Okay, so you're going you're gonna to put another kind of mic. All right. Uh, let me guess. You're going to put in a carbon mic. <laughs> no, sir, I'm afraid not. Why? This is a carbon, carbon mic. The telephone? Yeah, the telephone has a carbon mic in it. The, it has advantages in that it is sturdy, durable, yeah. reliable, yeah. doesn't break, but it has a narrow bandwidth. It only works between 300 cycles and 3,000, which oh, is good for the human voice, because yeah. that's our yeah. frequency response, but... Uh, no, no good for No broadcast. good for this. Okay. No. What's, well, this uh, what's this one good for, then, if, it's not, if you don't like it here? Oh, well, uh, human voice doesn't create much sound pressure. It doesn't... It's not very good, yeah. but we use it for kick drums, bass drums, snare drums, stuff like that. Things that make lots of sound, because oh. it, it, it can move long distances very, very well. Also, oh, it can take long, uh, high amplitude, long wavelength waves. We exactly. talked about that in ways. Yeah. Okay, so that's what that one's good that for. That one's that's good for. Okay, so you're going to replace it with, uh, let me guess, a condenser mic. Exactly right, the other condenser kind of mic. Okay, that's the one with the plates. That's the one with the All plates. Right. Why is it better than the dynamic? Well, the biggest difference is that it has less distance to travel. The, the plates are the closer plates together? The plates are closer together and they don't have to move as far. Okay, so it's, that's why it's more sensitive. Right. Oh, I see. So it gives so, you a cl crisp sound, nice exactly. clear sound, as opposed to the sort of... I think you can hear boom. the difference, in fact. All when right. you go in the other room, I'll put one mic up and I'll put the other mic up in your phones, and you, you tell me if you can hear the difference. Okay. Well, I'll just start reading again, and then okay, I'll, I'll hear it on the earphones when you change. Okay. Okay? 
In all three cases, the mechanical action of sound waves is turned into some kind of signal. Either now, a changing, now here's the other one. Either a changing resistance, a changing voltage. Yeah, I can. I can hear a lot better? Yeah, it's much better on the, on the condenser mic. All right. Mechanical transducers sometimes use materials that change their electrical properties when a mechanical force acts on them. One example is the property of certain crystals, such as those in the pickup of a phonograph needle. The crystal is attached to the needle in such a way that when the needle vibrates, as it passes through the grooves of the record, the crystal actually changes shape. The changes in shape produce tiny voltage changes in the crystal itself, and that produces tiny currents. This is called the piezoelectric effect. The amount of current depends on the amount of force acting on the crystal, so it can be used as an accurate signal. Besides their use in phonograph pickups, piezoelectric crystals are often used in instruments that measure forces acting on materials. Most commonly, they're used in accelerometers, which measure the forces produced by a change in speed or acceleration. It was through the use of accelerometers that engineers were able to measure the forces acting on car passengers during a controlled crash. The dummies were fully instrumented, so the experience could be recorded. In a way, these dummies had artificial senses. Similar instrumented dummies showed that the passengers of this airliner could have survived this fiery crash. When a material is stretched, it usually gets thinner as well as longer. If the material is a wire, the change in length or thickness will cause a change in resistance. This is also a relationship you've seen before in our unit on resistance. This is the principle behind a strain gauge. A wire is folded into a small square, which is then mounted on the object under stress. In this case, a metal bridge has been instrumented to measure its stress when under load. When the bridge bends from bouncing, the wire in the strain gauge is stretched a little bit. Its resistance changes, affecting the current passing through it. The changing current is then detected by instruments. This bridge uses diode displays to show the amount of strain. An array of strain gauges show that the bridge experiences the most strain where it's supported. That's typical of most large structures. Mechanical transducers can become a sense of touch for robots, so they can be sure that when they grip objects, they won't drop them or crush them. Mechanical transducers can measure the swaying of million-ton skyscrapers and all the forces that are acting on it because of the wind. Or they can delicately weigh miniature components, but in every case, the transducer takes the mechanical actions or mechanical forces acting on an object and represents them in a form that enables a technician to control the action of the machine.